We're looking at what a static site generator is and why you would use one. So let's start off with the fundamentals. What is a static site generator? So a static site generator is a program that takes source files and converts it into a static website. And this can come in many forms. There are some static site generators that take a directory of images or photos and convert it into a website with a photo gallery. Others help you build documentation websites or digital books, but the majority help you build a typical website with a blog. In this tutorial series, we're using Jekyll, which is an actively maintained static site generator and probably has the largest community. To understand how static site generators are different, let's have a look at how a dynamic CMS works. We're using WordPress in these examples, but this could easily be swapped out for Drupal or the majority of content management systems out there. So when a user goes to a page on a WordPress site, uh, first the request hits the web server, which then forwards it onto WordPress. WordPress builds the site from a number of templates, gets the content and other site data from the database, and then sends the complete website back to the user. So how does a static site generator work? Well, first we need to create the website. So first we run Jekyll on our source directory. That gives us a static website. Then we have our web server with Nginx set up, and then we just copy the static files across to our web server. Now, when a user visits the website, the request goes to our web server, Nginx, and Nginx just looks for the file that's been requested and if it exists, it will return it to the user. So now that we understand the fundamental differences between static site generators and dynamic CMSs, let's have a look at why we'd actually use one. The first point is there's less complexity in Jekyll websites. Jekyll sites are basically static sites with an extra templating language called Liquid. So if you know HTML, CSS and JavaScript, this is a really small step to learn Jekyll. We can actually just start with a static site and then introduce Jekyll functionality as it's needed. When we're setting up the server for the static website, all we need is a web server that's capable of serving static files. On the other hand, to build WordPress themes, in addition to knowing HTML, CSS and JavaScript, we need to understand PHP, MySQL and the WordPress API. To set up a server with WordPress, we need to set up our web server, which is Nginx in this case, PHP, and MySQL. Then we'll copy over our WordPress plugins, database, and files from our development environment to the server. The second point is speed. Serving a static site is extremely fast because all the web server needs to do is return a file. We can also make sure the site is perfectly optimized before we deploy it. So we can spend as long as we want doing optimizations like minification, optimizing images, uh, removing unused CSS and other techniques. And then when it's perfectly optimized, put it on the server. On a WordPress site, WordPress has to build the entire page from scratch for every request. And this involves putting together all the template files and getting the content or other data from the database. And this is made worse if we're using WordPress plugins. Each plugin will most likely need data from the database and time to process. A lot of this processing can be eliminated by using a cache, which means when a page is processed, it will save a copy for future requests. However, this adds extra complexity and another point of failure. We can also perform some optimizations like minification to speed up the site but they have to be done on the fly when a request is made. Security. There are only static files in a web server on our server for static websites, so there's nothing dynamic that can be exploited. It's still possible to access the server if the hacker can find a vulnerability in the web server, but the risk is greatly reduced. Hackers often look for out-of-date WordPress sites where there are known exploits. So the main way to keep WordPress secure is making sure it's kept up to date. 
The database is also a potential point of access if it's misconfigured. To help with security, there are a number of security plugins available which help prevent common misconfigurations. Every WordPress plugin we install is a potential access point for a hacker. In the Panama Papers incident, a hacker gained access to their server by exploiting an out-of-date slider plugin. Scalability. A single server can handle a lot of traffic if it's just serving static files. However, if we need more resources or redundancy, we can load balanced traffic across multiple servers. This is relatively easy to set up because we just need to make sure the static website is on all the servers. To scale WordPress, we can deploy our WordPress environment to multiple servers and have our database instance on a separate server. At some point we'll need to have multiple database servers as well, which adds another level of complexity. Version control. All the source code for a Jekyll site can live in a version control system like Git. With Git, we can go back to any single version of our site in its entire history. This also serves as an off-site backup. If we ever need to restore a server, all the files we need are in that Git repository. We can create branches, which allows us to work on multiple versions of a site and merge them together later. This is extremely useful when we have a large team of developers, as they can all work on the site simultaneously. It also means that they can clone the production environment on their local machine with minimal effort. If we take this a step further, we can even have our source code in an open source repository on GitHub and have anyone make updates and suggest merging it into our live site. In WordPress, we have the ability to revert changes on individual blog posts. We need to ensure we're backing up the database periodically and keeping track of the themes, plugins, and assets we've uploaded. This tutorial was brought to you by CloudCanon, the cloud content management system for Jekyll. For more free tutorials like this one, check out learn.cloudcanon.com.